Welcome back. We are here looking at the indexes. We'll start out by looking at the S&P 500, then the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq. So uh, September has, um, well, been a horrible month for the, you, the stock market, uh, especially the Nasdaq. Well, we'll start off with the S&P uh, and um, we'll look at what basically happened in last week and where probably we'll go uh, in the short term, medium term, and uh, long term for these indexes. So uh, on Monday and on Tuesday, we had uh, quite a good bull run. And then we had the, um, the Fed meeting and this market just broke down significantly. So if the Fed chairman goes out and says that we'll have uh, interest, interest rates at historic low for nearly two, three more years, that's not a very positive sign. The only reason why you would do that is because you think that the outlook for the economy is quite bad. And if you basically increase the interest rate, then it will get significantly worse. So low interest rates have are really bad for the banking sector. Um, and well, most crises basically start or get really bad when banks get into a lot of trouble. We just look at the uh, Great Depression. It was basically a massive banking crisis. And if you look at the uh, Great Recession in 2008, that's also a banking um, uh, was also due to banks getting into a lot of trouble. So. Is this the end of the of the pullback? Uh, short answer: No. We'll probably see um, this market go much lower, and in worst case scenario, this will drag on for months, probably also years. And the reason why I say that is because from two thousand and eight and all the way to two thousand and twenty or 2009 to 2020, we were basically in a bull market. And I think most people expected the massive fall in the, in the, in the stock market to be the next recession, where uh, the market would decline with 50, probably around all, all the way to 75% and so on. That is not what we saw. The, the only thing that we technically saw in in uh, March was um, a massive pullback similar to what we had in 2019. And we have not seen a long gradual decline in the stock market um, since the Great Recession in 2008. If we go all the way back to, uh, back to 2008, we can see it here. It took two years from the high of this market it was basically you have it here it was in 2007 from 2007 this one and all the way to 2009 we had a decline of 56 or 57 percent in the s p 500 and it took two years so and that is the same case for the dot-com bubble, and that is the same case for most other recessions, that it takes, takes a quite a long time for the stock market to basically bottom. And what we saw in, in March and April was not that. We basically saw a massive pullback where the Fed and also Congress um, came in and saved this market. And then we had this next big jump. This is just an um, artificial increase in the market due to the Fed uh, pumping money into the market and also um, uh, the Congress uh, passing a lot of stimulus in order to get this market um, to go higher. Um, and then you basically can ask yourself, is this reality and the short answer is no this is not reality fundamentally the united states economy at the moment is horrible 
is absolutely terrible. If you look at GDP growth, if you look at the consumption, if you look at unemployment, um, then it's probably the worst economy. Um, uh, it, it, it's the better, worst um, economy than it has been since the Great Depression. Uh, and for the stock market to behave like if it basically is a, a boom in economy just doesn't make any sense. Um, at some point, this bubble had to burst. Uh, whether or not that is right now, if we have a pullback and then go higher and then we, we go, so we go much lower, um, probably. Um, however, situation both politically and economically in the United States at the moment are very, very, very dire. Um, I don't really see the um, Congress uh, coming together uh, to make a new stimulus bill before the United States election or after it. At the moment, they are focusing on um, uh, the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg or, and the replacement of, uh, of that justice. And there will be very little room for um, the uh, room for um, negotiation for a massive stimulus bill. Um, so it is up to the Fed, and that is a big problem because if you go all the way back to 2008 uh, and all the way back to the Great Recession, it was basically Congress, the, the inaction of Congress that led to the massive, massive decline in the, the stock market. Um, and if we see that again now, then yes, we'll, history will probably uh, repeat itself. Then we also have, uh, this, this guy is becoming quite a cliche analysis right at the moment because everybody's pointing this out, that we have this res uh, support resistant line and we have this support line. At the moment, we we tested the support uh, this resistant here, and basically we broke down. Um, and every single time we have we tested this uh, resistant line, we have broken down all the way down to the fifty moving average, which is this red line here, which is around at this point. I'll make a line here which is around 3100 level. I do expect us to go to 32 level before we go to 31 level. Uh, but at this moment, the 50 moving average is around the 31 level. So it has historically tested the 50 moving average. If we go all the way back here, we go to the top and we go and test the 50 moving average. Then we go to the top again. And if we don't, if we break the 50 moving average, we go all the way down to this uh, purple line here, which is the 200 moving average. So just have that in mind. If the 50 moving average breaks, historically, we go to the 200 moving average. And uh, on the daily chart, the 50 moving average has broken. This is the weekly chart. Uh, so, and if the then we basically, if you take this uh, point here again, and we go all the way back to the top, if the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average break, and the 300 moving average, then we basically go all the way down to this bottom. So there are barriers that we can, you know, that we, we will test, but this can get extremely ugly. Um, it probably looks something, Thing like this, something like that. So we'll probably have a much gradual decline, uh, something like something like that. So we'll go all the way down to around two one thousand nine hundred, if we break down significantly and retest this support line again. Um, that will probably take um, all the way into 2021. But this, I'm not very bullish at this market at the moment. There's no reason to be bullish at the market. I know the, uh, the, the saying that don't fight the Fed, 
But if Congress is not part of this solution, then we are in, then basically the market's in deep, deep, deep trouble. We basically need Congress and the Fed to pump liquidity into this market and to, to basically get the things going. The Fed cannot handle this alone. Um, and there are cracks in the system at this moment. Um, people are starting to panic because most of the companies that are in the S&P 500, uh, for example, Google and Apple and so on, are so uh, overvalued at this point that they basically have to have a massive pullback. And there are only a handful of stocks that have been pushing this uh, market higher. So if we go uh, look at the at this market, uh, the big losers on Friday, for example, were um, HR, yeah, H and R. Uh, but if you look at the no, okay, never mind. But overall, the 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 reason why we had this big pullback uh, recently is because. Uh, companies like Apple, like Tesla, like uh, like Google, and uh, the big company tech companies um, basically declined. But if we look at the technical indicators uh, for next week, uh, we can see that the MACD is incredibly, uh, incredibly uh, bearish. Uh, we are not oversold at this point. Uh, we are at 30, uh, 34, and under 30 is basically oversold. So we may see this market go lower, and we do expect it to go lower because we basically closed underneath the 50 moving average. So the next um, support area here is at uh, 3,200, which is around uh, here. It's just above. Uh, the green uh, moving averages, which is the 100 moving average. So we can also see that historically, that was basically uh, support for quite a long time. So I do expect this market to go and retest this uh, support area before we have a bounce. But in the long run, I do this, expect this market to go lower. We got a way ahead of ourselves. The economy is not this good. This does not represent the the, uh, the United States economy at this point. Um, if you look at the stochastic, it is basically pointing downwards. The same goes for the Bollinger Band. A momentum is basically to the downside. If you look at the weekly which I think is probably uh, one of the best indicators of where momentum is pointing at at this moment, then we, it gets really ugly. Um, for example, the MACD. We can see that we had this massive bull run uh, here, and now we are about to break to the downside. And we have not crossed the signal line yet, but when we do, this will fall quite fast. Uh, 2000, 3,200 first. After that, well, we have the 200 moving average and the 50 moving average in the weekly chart here. Uh, 200 moving average is uh, this line here. 50 moving average is here. And the 200 moving average is here. And these will be uh, significant support levels. We can also look at the Fibonacci retracement to give an indication of where probably we are going to see most significant resistance. We are about to test the first Fibonacci retracement. The second is around the 50 moving average. Uh, 50, uh, 50 Fibonacci retracement is around the 150 moving average. And the 61 is just uh, close at the 200 moving average. So we probably, most likely, will see a retest of this area here. And if that breaks, we will probably test these 50, these Fibonacci retracements. Um, at this point, 
I would just see how low the market will go. Um, usually, it's a bad idea to to short indexes uh, because um, this can turn to the upside quite quickly and people can get, basically get caught. Um, if we look at the Dow Jones, it is it has not been as bullish as the S&P 500 has or the Nasdaq has. Uh, we have or we didn't break down as significantly as the S&P 500 or or the Nasdaq. However, if the other indexes do break down, then do expect the Nasdaq to go as well. So the next resistant level is around um, this area here, which is at 26,721. Uh, then we go to, to 25,051, and the, 50, uh, the Fibonacci retracement is at 23,000. However, if the S&P 500 goes and the Nasdaq goes, then we will also see a significant decline in the uh, Dow Jones. And this is the weekly chart. As you can see, uh, we are about to go and break the signal line here at the, at the, at the MACD, which will basically pull this market much lower. At the moment, the RSI is quite bullish. Uh, we're not overbought at, at this point. The stochastic is very negative and usually when it breaks like this it goes all the way down to the uh, red line and if we go past the red line then we have a significant decline uh, also bollinger band are pointed to momentum is basically uh, pointing downwards so on to the to the nasdaq so if we uh, go to the one chart here and the daily we can see that we broke the channel two weeks ago we had been in a in a channel channel here for quite a long time and this channel has definitely uh, been broken and uh, from here we probably will go much lower as i said most of the companies that have been uh, pushing this market higher, the, the darlings of of, uh, of Wall Street, Apple, Google, Netflix, um, uh, Tesla, and, and so on and so on, um, there are at the moment extremely overvalued. If you look at their PE ratio, um, it's quite ridiculous at this point. Uh, we're ta not talking about double digits. We're talking about uh, uh, three-digit numbers, which is uh, just uh, fairly ridiculous. And at some point, um, reality uh, settles in, and these um, these stocks have to uh, decline in value at some point. And we can basically call it a bubble. This basically looks like a bubble. If you look at this, then that basically looks like a ridiculous bubble. Um, so we were, we basically needed this pullback. And the question is, how far will we go? Uh, the Fibonacci retracements are probably a good guess. We did break through the first uh, 23.6. The next one is at, uh, at this level here which is around uh, here, which is around uh, 10,300. That would be a, a good guess to, uh, to where this basically will bounce, but I do expect this market to go lower. And technically, it's a good thing that it will go lower because it's so overextended. Uh, we got way of ahead of ourselves. Um, uh, and yes, this market most likely will go lower. So after, if we break uh, um, 10,300, we'll go down to 9,640, and we could go as low as the 200 moving average, which is around um, 8,000, 9,000, and so on. This, this um, 
So no, not the uh, not the 200 moving average, but the 300 moving average on the weekly chart, which around 9,000 something like that. Uh, that would be a quite a good guess. If we were to break that, then we would go to these lows here, and we could basically make the same analysis as do we did for the S&P 500. If all of these support levels break, then we'll go much lower. Um, if we look at the weekly chart, we can do a very similar analysis. Uh, well, no. If we do this, we'll probably go all the way down to this 200 moving average, which is around 7,300. However, that's not going to happen tomorrow. That's not going to happen uh, anytime soon. This is the long run um, uh, estimate that we, every time we basically get this uh, enormous push to the upside, we go crashing down and we usually bounce off the 200 moving average. Um, that probably happens sometime next year. That's not going to something that's going to happen now, most likely. So if you look at the technical indicators for the uh, NASDAQ, we can see that the R MACD is about to, cr to cross the signal line indicating that we will go uh, significantly lower from here. We are not oversold, not overbought. Uh, the RSI is quite uh, flat. Um, on the weekly chart, we can see that the stochastic is really, really, um, uh, very, very um, uh, bearish at this point. And the, the Bollinger Band is also pointing for downwards momentum. Uh, this is the weekly chart. And if you put up the daily chart, we can basically see that we'll probably test this green line first, which is 10,000. Uh, 481 so 10,500 will be our first target and next target will be around 10,000 um, this is not a market that you basically short it can turn very rapidly uh, because of the companies that are in this index uh, Apple is a long-term uh, good investment at this point, it needs to pull back uh, because it's so uh, the stock price is so overvalued, and that same goes for most of the tech companies. So, hope you find this analysis uh, helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by clicking the support the button, subscriber button, and uh, putting a like, and uh, click the bell button if you want to see our newest videos. Uh, good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.